me live. All right. Welcome, everyone. Um, I am Viv, and I am here with the lovely cast of Hell of a Boss. And yeah, this is for um, everyone is, is about to start their uh, next batch of, of print signings. And so we are here to ask their answer some questions and chat a little bit and just have a good time. So I will uh, let everyone introduce themselves and everything and who they play if you're I'm sure everyone's familiar but yeah just to, to start things off let's start with Erica. Uh, hello my name is Erica Lindbeck and I voice Luna in Hell of a Boss. Thank you so much for having me. Awesome. Brandon? Right, I'm Play Blitz and the O is silent and I'm in Hell of a Boss and I'm one of the bosses and um, I'm Brandon. <laughs> Richard? <laughs> I'm uh, Brandon Rogers. Um, <laughs> perhaps you've seen some of my videos. Um, they're very good, especially my Disneyland video. You might have liked that one. It was very mm -hmm. good. Uh, I know I look very much different uh, on camera, but uh, uh, I'm Richard Horvitz. I play the voice of Moxie, married to my love, uh, Millie. And um, I also am fortunate to get to voice direct this uh, amazing cast. So uh, that's who I am. There you have it. Awesome. Vivian? Hello. I am the other Vivian. Vivian. <laughs> <laughs> Viv, Vivian. Um, and I play Millie, the wife of Moxie. And uh, happy to be here. Easy to work with, hopefully, Richard, Vivian. <laughs> <laughs> oh, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> and then uh, Bryce? Hi, I'm Bryce. I play Stolas. I am... Connected to, blitz, <laughs> to Blitzy. Oh. I've never heard the word Blitz. They're blitzy. very connected. It's <laughs> only Blitzy to me. We're hitched. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I'm, I'm thrilled to be back. Thanks for uh, for hosting us, Viv. Absolutely. It's always, it's always such a treat uh, to have you guys. It's uh, wonderful to work with every single one of you. And it's an amazing, amazing little creation that we've all this journey we've been on together it's obviously continued to be incredible i know i can't remember you know time has completely been lost to me but you know i remember i don't know how many episodes we had out last time but we've definitely had more <laughs> out and it's amazing uh to to get to continue to celebrate as as we as we release things um so i do have some questions i collected from twitter just letting the chat know um, especially if anyone's donating, like, thank you so much if you are, but, um, just to let you know, like, I'm not looking at the chat today. Um, I asked, uh, Twitter beforehand and I have some questions from there. So I'm going to be answering or asking from there. Um, but, uh, the first question is for everyone, how did you decide what kind of voice you would give, uh, your characters? Did you have difficulties at all? And we'll start with Erica. Um, no, <laughs> no. Luna is is so much uh, a facet of who who I am as a person that not I don't even think her voice changed from when I auditioned that versus when we actually got in the booth and did it. It was just like okay, well this is what this is gonna be, but I but I think that a lot oftentimes that's the strongest choice, right? To just inject who you are into the character, and if I can you know if I can do that as much as possible, then there's not a lot left. Like there's not a lot of like sauce to throw on it. You just kind of do you and and that's and that's the character yeah they uh, rare, rarely rarely have i been been so immediately uh connected to a character as the way that i am with luna so yeah <laughs> that's amazing uh brandon um blitz is kind of just like all my characters combined into one uh, it was just it was like the garbage disposal of all my characters because i don't have the budget to do that kind of a character in live action and so, uh, yeah, I, I just get to be foul and angry and it's just me on the worst and best day at the same time at any given point, you know. That's a fun way to put it. Yeah. That's awesome. Uh, Richard. Well, as you know, uh, Moxie uh, <laughs> is very close to my own voice, but, uh, <laughs> Uh, you know, it's just kind of my voice um, that I just swear a lot. So, 
<laughs> that seems to be a, a highlight of uh, a lot of the fans of the show to hear, to hear, I guess, Zim um, cursing, but it's not Zim. I have to always make that very clear. <laughs> Zim definitely had a much of a different tone to it, you know, stuff like that. But, um, but I like the Moxie being Moxie because it is just cause it's just my voice being frustrated with, you know, Luna who always calls me fat and, um, and, and my love for Millie and uh, my, uh, my frustration with Blitzo. So uh, the it's a complex about, relationship. Yeah, you know, it's a complex. These are all complex relationships, truly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's me in a nutshell. Wonderful, Vivian. Um, when I got the breakdown for Millie, it said strong Southern type accent. And I put on my white heels and squeezed my knees together and she just came out and <laughs> she's, she's been there ever since. And I have to, you know, keep her up because I live down here in my lower register, but you know, it was very natural, very, very natural. Yeah. It's, I love, I love the energy that you bring to her. Cause it's definitely, I think uh, a lot of other, uh, folks on who've talked so far you know it's very, very closer to the natural voice so with you it's a little bit more like right that's that. very true it is close <laughs> to natural. but it's an amazing voice that you've created for it so yeah. fantastic yeah. To, Thanks, to be wonderful and then bryce yeah i remember the audition having sort of two prompts to for stolas one was a part that i did <laughs> So I felt like, okay, well, I know that. <laughs> but the other was King George from Hamilton, um, which gave me a very specific kind of image of uh, Stolas and, and, and the playfulness and also the, the sort of British mid-Atlantic um, speech patterns. And so like out of that, I think grew something that's like, a, it's like half, Mrs. Doubtfire, half my British grandmother-in-law, who's a dance teacher. Um, and so it's like my impression of her mixed with some Mrs. Doubtfire, which, you know, was one of my favorite, favorite for performances growing up watching. Um, and uh, the rest is like with the help of you guys, honestly, you know, and on the day with, with Richard saying, hey, I think this part you want to you want to pitch a little higher in your voice, like that part of Stolas that's up there. Let's see if this part lives up there and some other stuff lives, you know, so it, it feels like to answer the question specifically, we find the voice and then on the day someone's helping us really craft the voice and the performance. It's, it's not like we know exactly what we're going to do when we show up. It's really invented and, and, and baked fresh. Uh, I, have a, I have a saying, Bryce, you're absolutely right, that, that the voice does the work of the spirit, and the spirit that I talk about is the spirit of play, meaning that if you're going to play Superman, you're not going to go, freeze Lex Luthor, I'm Superman. Automatically voices come out, you know, and during that playtime, you did such am amazing things, all of you did, but I remember the very first day we were working with you, Vivi and I were a little bit nervous about the swearing stuff, <laughs> like, you know, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and, and we, we were, we put like a disclaimer on everything we said to Bryce, you know, don't feel obligated, you know, you know, <laughs> as, you know, as graphic as you want to get, you know, just really, and he's like, oh, no problem. <laughs> and yeah. It went on for 17 minutes. I'm like, wow. <laughs> freedom. It's amazing what freedom will give yeah. you. Of course, now I've got, you say, the price of my love's not a price. Now I'm stuck on that. Thank you, Bryce. You're welcome. You you were you were uh, singing a lot of Hamilton, like off, you know, like when we're between like actors or like. I can't help it. That's why I love this show so much is because I'm amongst my musical theater people, and that's like where I've always loved to be. You know, that's why one of my major major draws to the show is that, and just so smart, Vivian. Thank you. No, yeah, I, I love the, the musical theater aspect to it is obviously like everything I make ends up being very musical oriented. And, and this one is just turning. It's it's the, the more we, we make and the more we like, you know, write and everything, the more it like gets really like more heavily into that musical territory. And it's, it's awesome, but awesome. Well, all right. The next question that I have is um, someone says, uh, love every single one of you. Small question for you all. 
have you ever included a line uh, or word your character has said so far in the show in your everyday vocabulary has none of it made its way in? Um, we'll start with Vivian. Y'all, y'all, <laughs> y'all is a part of my everyday vocabulary, 100% yes. Awesome. Uh, Richard? I never swore before I worked on this show. So now there's this F word that I find myself using more than ever before. Wow. That's impressive. Never yeah. before. Never, never <laughs> in my life. Never, ever, never have I ever. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, Bryce. I'm trying to think, like, I was gonna say some swear too. Like I, I, I feel like there's a, there's a great sequence coming up. It hasn't come out yet, but we we just recorded um, where there's just like some some perfectly juxtaposed curse words that uh, that I'm sorry to say have made it into my everyday life. <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited to know which ones those are just for my, cause yeah, I know we, um, we've recorded some really fun and different things for Stolas in the, in the more recent uh, sessions so mm -hmm. for people to see it it might be a little bit out but very excited for us to reach that um Brandon um Bl Blitz has helped me relate to my own life in different ways I have on my team of people that produce the you know for the YouTube side of stuff um my cameraman and my PA are married my producer and my manager are engaged um and um uh, and my roommates are are married and so I'm I I, I'm constantly finding myself in blitzisms with, with just like, God, you two are always fucking three feet apart all the time. And, like, and I find, I find like, it, it is fun. I've never noticed that like, I'm, I work with so many couples until blitz. Have, so I, I don't know if there's any one, there are lines blitz says in future episodes where he, he voices frustrations that come of this triangle um, that I think I definitely uh, relate to, but um I don't know. Yeah, but Blitz, Blitz has helped me realize my own life in general. I don't, think, I don't know if there's any specific line he says that I have implemented other than all of the swears. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes when I'm saying goodbye to people, I'll go hoot hoot. And, I, and they don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> I don't know if I actually say that in the show, but it's just something that has become stolen to me. Uh, so that's one I just thought of. I love that. If he doesn't say it, I feel like he should at some point. He should at some point. It could be hello or goodbye. Hoot hoot. <laughs> exactly. It's like ciao. Ciao. Yeah, exactly. I love that. That's great. And then Erica. Um, I would, I would, I'm pretty aligned with, with Brandon on that. I feel like Luna has, has, has kind of like, some of Luna is bringing up the, the uglier parts of myself and telling them that they're okay and using them for my art. And thus, I feel like it's bled into my real life in that I'm like, it's okay to be angry. It's okay to let it out in a healthy way. Maybe not by kicking a baby carriage, but <laughs> other ways. Um, yeah, yeah. I think there's something really therapeutic about like dragging that stuff up, like primal anger, primal aggression, which I have a lot of just as a person and going, hey, you, let me use this for something fun. Uh, so yeah. I remember there was one session recently where you came in and you were like, I am in right now. I had like, it was like the drive over, something had happened and you were very in the Luna headspace. Oh, I was, that warm up at all. Absolutely. I was screaming in my car, I was so upset. Oh. I forget what it was, but man, I was like, I'm in, let's do it. Let's fucking do this. Let's go. <laughs> I don't know who hurt you. I'm, I'm starting to realize how protective I am over you, Erica. Oh my I'm, God. <laughs> and, and, it, and, and how, um, how much I, I watch Richard when he sleeps. <laughs> isn't he, Richard, go Richard's isn't he gorgeous? Like oh, he's beautiful. I got it all on tape. I'm, 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 I'm more sleep. I sleep more than I'm awake at this, at this point. <laughs> <laughs> oh. All right, we've got a question for, for Brandon and Richard. Oh. Uh, how did it feel to voice in action scenes with a lot of impact sounds needed for them? And Richard, <laughs> how did you direct Brandon for those scenes in episode five? Okay, for a second, I was like, is episode five out yet, yeah, Vivian? Yes. <laughs> I was like, yeah, yeah, yes, I was thinking the same thing. I was like, do they know what happened? Um, 
<laughs> I want, well, I just want to say every time working, I, we were, I like, I, every time I work with Richard, it feels like I'm getting as much out of it as I would with any LA, you know, acting workshop. It feels every session, even though it's just a recording session, it's very collaborative and it's very experimental. And we get very we, we playful. We get very playful with everything. And that's, I, this is my first big voice acting gig. And so I'm learning, you know, from one of the best people in the biz of what, like, this is how you do fights. This is how you do. And it's so much more fun and childish than I thought professionals do it. It's just like, all right, give me 10 punches. You got punched 10 times. Give me 10. Ver- uh, ooh, ah, ooh, ee, ah, ooh. And then now you're kicking 10 times. Uh, ah, ooh, mm, ah. And, and then we just give all that shit to whoever cuts it up together and has to listen to that at three in the morning until it works its way into a fight scene. <laughs> um, yeah, anyways, that, yeah, it's a lot of fun I, doing fights. I, uh, yeah, I, that's the kind of atmosphere that I like to create when we're working is, I, I call it the art of playing pretend as, as Vivian knows, um, and Erica, um, that I call it the art of playing pretend because that's what we're doing. In the long run, no matter what, to me, I look at this as, you know, hitting play and record on the first Panasonic tape recorder we ever had. And um, so it should be free and, and people should feel free and especially on this show to do what they want. And so it is a collaborative, a collaborative uh, process. And to, to direct the fight scenes, I just, I just take a page out of, um, you know, video game direction, which is okay. Three short punches, three three medium punches, uh, getting hit, being hit, throwing the punch, slow death, medium death, hitting a wall, those sort of things. But it's it goes fast because we get we get like Brandon said, we get way more than we ever need. But mm-hmm. it's good to have it because when 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 Vivian is putting the show together, she goes, oh, thank goodness we had that extra those extra efforts, so we can just pull that, which is really important. Is that. Um, you know, in all fairness, Vivian and I direct together. She's an amazing creator. And so we'll say, I'll say, do you think that's enough? And Vivian will say, uh, I think I need just a little bit more. I'm like, okay, here we go. And because I, we <laughs> we're both firm believers in having way more than we need, because when you get to the, um, the putting it all together phase, if we don't have it, then that becomes a pickup and that becomes a whole nother I was, I, I was about to say like it's so lovely to have the luxury of time and like space to do that because a, yeah. on a lot of projects you don't like mactly. like give us three give us three all right we got 300 lines to get through in two hours so here exactly. you go exactly. with this it's so lovely that that I leave every session going wow we really explored every option that we could <laughs> possibly because I'm I'm the type of person like I'll keep doing takes until you tase me like I just want to do every single thing that I could possibly think of um, and that's, it's really, I feel, it feels very like, ah, we went to completion. Like we did everything we could put, we hundred percent at it. We platinumed it. Like, hell yeah. yeah. <laughs> Eric, also, I, I saw someone scare you as a clown when you were recording. Was that for hell of a, what, what project were you doing? I can't, I, I'm not allowed to say, uh, it was, it's something that I've been working on for a couple of years, but I've been working with that studio for a long time. And I had joked, this is, oh man, I had joked. My engineer had said, oh, I bought some orchids to, hi. I had bought some orchids to, uh, to, to spruce up the booth. And I said, you know what would really spruce up the booth? If, um, if, you had, if you hired a clown to stand in the corner of the room, I feel like it would really, it would really heighten the atmosphere. And I, I'd always know he was there, you know? Uh, and uh, on, the, on our, one of our breaks, they, they slacked somebody and had him go buy a clown outfit and stand outside of the booth. And I was on Skype with the company. And one of the people goes, what the, what the hell is that? And I turn and there's just a full clown. <laughs> full clown. And they and they recorded it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Like that guy had to go buy a clown outfit. Like it wasn't in his trunk. Right. I know. Yeah, yeah exactly. And I, I I marched out and I went, you guys have too much fucking time on your hands. And they went, yeah. Yeah, we do. <laughs> anyway, sorry. I was completely, but it was insane. It was, uh, yeah. I was like, wow, you guys, I was almost a little flattered that they went through that much effort. Um, and it was on camp like it, they got it at least the, the, the souvenir of the footage of it of me screaming yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I i love that i was actually thinking about that like how when i'm you know when i'm when i'm voice acting in video games i sound so cool and the second you put a clown outside my booth i'm like oh my god ah! like it's just <laughs> it shows your range you know? <laughs> mm-hmm. it's amazing uh bryce were you about to say something back there oh i was just gonna add that you know, what you guys are making me 
realize and think about is, you know, as the voice actors, we get a lot of credit for, for a performance of a specific character, but actually the editors and the people who are, who are taking our raw material and crafting it into something deserve credit too, because ultimately they're the ones kind of preserving the character and choosing our best takes that go into what you eventually hear. Um, and we're lucky that we get to do so many takes and with, with Richard and Viv's help, you know, we get to do a bunch of stuff, but we don't ultimately see the performance until you guys see it. And, and that's, you know, a, a lot of that is done um, after we perform and, and credit goes to, to Viv and, and her editors who are, who are pulling the right things for the right moments. Absolutely. Yeah, they're, they're in charge of the comedic timing 100%. Anytime you laugh at something, although it's not usually, more often than not, it's not necessarily the actor's choice of when that punchline hit you. Um, the delivery, sure, but yeah, it's, it's, I'm, I'm watching it. I'm like, wow, they, they had a fundamental understanding of how that joke should ring out and, and the timing of it, yeah. And um, the, the, the fans are, have such keen eyes on things that, that go so quickly. Like the last one in episode five, everyone, everyone caught Blitz's look when he saw the horse, <laughs> right? Did you notice that? Everyone's like, do you see his look? Yes, it's, it's like, it's, it's that fast. It's like you blink and you miss that shot, but mm -hmm. everyone caught it. And so those are those things that I think are amazing that you put in with, with agreed with, with Bryce and the editing that all that is, it's, it's just a, a collaborative process. Um, I don't know if any of you have watched this, but I recommend it to everyone. McCartney 321 on, um, on Hulu is amazing because he, he, you know, Paul's at this age where he's willing to talk about all the Beatles stuff. And he said, and you'd be, I'm blown away because they, they, they solo all of the tracks in the master recording. So you hear like Paul McCartney playing the most amazing bass I've ever heard in my life. And he said, the thing that made it work is that we were free. We were free to do what we wanted and no one, and, and he goes, now every once in a while, one of us would be like off on some idea that they wanted to do. And when it was bad, all three of us ganged up on the other one and said, stop doing that, stop now. And I think it's kind of like that when you have a show that has a good chemistry with the cast and the crew and the animators and the editors, it's just, you you just feel like you're like in this, uh, this, this, this flow. And I think that a big part of the flow is that we do so many things at once as we're recording, you know, we're, we're doing it all. And so we don't have a lot of time to, um, to think in between episodes. <laughs> it's like, oh, we're in the zone. Let's go on to this and do this, you know, so. And the energy is very electric sometimes. I think people, there's this, I had this misconception that voice acting is you just you're ta standing and talking uh, you know, like you're ordering a meal at Burger King. And it's so, like, I find myself sweating at some points because I'm jumping up and down or just the delivery gets my heart racing in a certain way. And you you walk out of there feeling just spent, you know, and it, it it's so much fun. And it's so, it's it's unlike anything I've ever, ever done before. And you and Viv are just so um, inspiring to be in the room with. I just... <laughs> I have to keep myself from laughing all of the time because you're so funny and the ideas that come to mind when we're when we're on the mic because of the wittiness of the writing and like Richard <laughs> the analogies that you come with when we're when we're crafting fights and you'd like pull some shit from like a circus like and now you have knives on your nose and I just <laughs> a knife has hit your eyeball someone pulls it out <laughs> Just, it's so fun. It's so fun. It's so fun. It's so electric, and it's fun. It is, and and the quality of the show is amazing. Amazing, given our limitations due to to COVID and the pandemic, you would not, you know, you cannot tell that we can't be in the room together at this moment. But even through, you know, Zoom, the electricity and the chemistry is still very palpable, which is amazing, given the the technology today yeah I, I the the biggest like thing that's a shame to me like is is that I haven't gotten to meet some of you guys like in person yet and it's like crazy um and I'm, I'm looking forward to the day that that can happen but like and we're all gonna walk in the booth and we're all gonna go 
Oh, oh, um, <laughs> hi, wow, hi. wow. You look so different on camera. <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> Ooh, this Ooh. is not gonna work out. Ooh, oh, right. uh, everyone's real height. And everyone, like, we're all just gonna have to have a TV screen in front of us. <laughs> <He'll turn. laughs> I was gonna say, um, in in relation to what you said, Vivian, about um, you know the things Richard would pull out like to describe the fights. Part of that for the audience watching is because you know the boards. Some episodes, you know, the boards are, are there and, and that, that's always amazing for me because there's sometimes really specific movements and actions that the board artists will put in. Um, but a lot of times because of the way we're recording, you know, we're, we're kind of going at an episode like in order. And so, you know, not all of them have been boarded. And so a fight scene is a complete guess. And so there's like a lot of performances and stuff. And so that's where we have to be. Cause I'm like, okay, my gut tells me um, because I give the board artists a lot of freedom to really make the fights really unique. And we've had some really amazing ones. I know we've, we've gotten a taste of that so far in, in the latest episode that came out episode five, there is a bonkers one in episode six. That's all I can say about it is we have a, an absolutely like there's it was impressive thing. enough for us to come back in, to be called back in for a day of pickups and say, we have new audio we want you to do because the animation's so good with this fight that we need your, these new uh, grunts and, and shit to match what's happening here. The cherub um, episode was amazing. That fight scene, which we, we, we beat to death with efforts. <laughs> like, you know, Millie and Moxie making out in the middle of the fight is like one of my favorite things ever. As they're swinging and their tongues are like, ah. The tongues are going, yeah. <laughs> their tongues are going, <laughs> just. Oh, and their faces while their tongues are going. Yes. <laughs> like, it's very proper. <laughs> and, they're, and they're still shooting at the same <laughs> time. So <it's> yeah. <laughs> so good. Yeah. That's what's fun about it, though. It's like even the, the, the people can, uh, the audience can laugh from el ingredients submitted from almost every department. You know, some of the jokes that are just a background Easter egg can be just as funny as something that like, you know, is in the performance or in the writing or whatever. So it, it's it's a fun way to show, like, I feel like a lot of departments can really shine in this um, and they do, yeah. Absolutely, yeah. No, sometimes the artists on the show, like whether it be the board, the board artists adding visual humor that like mm -hmm. elevates a joke or just creates a new joke that's like a visual joke or yeah you know, like you said the background artists like putting in a really funny billboard or or a funny detail um it's it's very much like it's a show where i i encourage you know anything that can add to the humor in any way and and it, you know, even the animator is adding like acting to the to the to the raw voice and that it changes the meaning or changes the the tone it, it's it's so much can can change things um but all right the next question we have is what is the cast most looking forward to in the future of the series keep up the amazing work and i know that might be tricky to answer because of spoilers but i guess broadly <laughs> we can answer this one let's start with um richard for this one Ooh, uh, <laughs> Ooh, Richard gets it first. What am I looking forward to the most? Um, I'm looking forward to the most the reaction of where the story goes from our 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 fan base because I think you're going to be happy, sad, and angry and mean and <laughs> I'm just getting every emotion that you can possibly have. Happy than all the bad ones. Yeah, covering all the bases. Uh, no, um, I, I think I'm looking forward to that because I think we have a, a lot of great things planned that I'm, I, I myself am excited to see come out. Um, <laughs> that's all I can really say. It's a very yeah. tricky, I know, it's kind tricky. Of a also I'm looking forward to, yeah, like I look forward to our sessions every day because we, you know, when we're doing the sessions, we start at nine in the morning and we go till usually six at night at all via Zoom and everyone's in all parts of the, the country. Um, uh, and so that that's fun to organize. But when we get going, it's just, you just get in that rhythm and it's just, you just feel in a creative mode. And that's what I live for, staying in that creativity and fun. So that's what I'm looking forward to. Absolutely. Erica. 
Um, something that I was thinking about that I think is quite interesting is, you know, when we did this pilot, uh, what was it? 2019 that we did the pilot. Yeah. I think yeah. So. Um, you know, you, you, the pilot was like five minutes long and we, we only got to explore a certain amount of these characters. And as time has gone on, you know, the onion layers are slowly being peeled away and, and you just, you'll read a script and go, Oh, wow, I've never, I haven't played that side of Luna yet. Like, how does that work? How do we do that? Um, and that is something that I think you guys have done an incredible job of like writing, writing that. So for her, for her, for everybody, of course, but also for Luna, it's just, it's just cool. Cause like, you know, if, if you, if you didn't take such care with this show, it could be very two dimensional. Like the characters could be very unrelatable, only have a couple, you know, qualities about them that, you know, that made them sort of, you know, just not, not fleshed out. Um, and I'm just really happy that they are. Um, yeah. Cause I love, I love, there's nothing funnier or not funnier, like more impactful than something that is both hilarious and absolutely devastating. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. That's my favorite world to live in. So, um, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Uh, Vivian. Um, I look forward to learning more about Millie <clears throat> every time I get a script. I mean, we learned so much about her history in the last couple episodes and, you know, as much as I have an idea of who she is, the depth grows every time I get a new page from you. So that's awesome. I also um, really look forward to more missions because <laughs> the places we go and visit and see and the disguises get better and better and better and better, Viv. It's just... <laughs> I cannot wait to see these new missions. Yeah, I we definitely like tried some new things in in the in the episodes that we recorded more recently, and that was a blast. Especially uh, with with you and Richard. There's a, a yes, that's I think that's <laughs> been my favorite thing that we've done. Uh, yeah, that is, yeah. There's, there's definitely, there's and once really again, good. just like unfolding naturally in the booth. Like, oh, what about? What if yeah. we did this? What, what, what if we did this? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Can't wait to talk about that one. Yeah, that's I'm I'm very excited for in the future. That's a the big Billy episode. It has a lot <laughs> of fun things. <laughs> so I'm starting to slowly like weed in that we, there is more coming after <laughs> this season. And I'm very excited for it. Um uh Bryce. Yeah, I agree with everything said. I think <laughs> the complexity of character of depth of relationships like that's all being sort of slowly revealed and and like a you know the like a great tv show that you eventually get to you know follow long story arcs rather than like a quick quick but like a shorter movie you know it feels like you guys have built something that allows for this kind of branching of the world and of the storyline and and for you know Stolas and Blitz our our relationship uh is it really you know follows I think a um a dynamic track that, that I'm excited for people to see I'm excited to see how um how it comes out absolutely absolutely <laughs> I'm very excited for some of that too, <laughs> like myself. We, we've got some great things. And music. I would add music too. Like I'm excited for more music. Yes. Great. Brandon. Um, I know everyone's saying character, but like these are these are characters that the audience thinks they know after five episodes. They, you know, and it's like it's just the tip of the iceberg that we've announced or I've, I've allowed people to know about these these characters um I've never personally I've never related more to a character um than than Blitz even though he's the most outlandish and non-human character I've ever played um and the way that his soul is tested over the the course of what's to come and the way that the, the the trials that he has put through um and the way he reacts to those and the way he you know, it changes his character. It, it's all very fascinating. And I, it, it, even if I wouldn't exactly, do, I mean, he's an assassin. I've never killed a person in my life, but if he, 
<laughs> the way he reacts to stuff, I can definitely get behind his reasoning for just about everything, almost everything, except assassinating people. But um, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm excited to see what people think of how, because everyone breaks down stuff like, you know, to, to such a fine uh, powder, you know, in these analysis videos. And um, it, I'm just so hungry to see what they're going to break down when these you know, next few episodes come out and how they digest it. And I'm just so excited to see that reaction. Absolutely. Amazing. Uh, the next two questions are kind of similar. So I'm going to start with um, the more specific one is for Vivian. Um, what was your favorite episode to record? And if I guess if it's in a future episode, you can say that, but. Um, yeah. Of, I guess of episodes out and then, you know, in general. Sorry, phone's going off. Um, my favorite episode to record was one that you guys haven't seen yet. And um, <laughs> of what's been out is definitely going home to my parents' home in the country. That one was so much fun. That was such a great one to record. And then the previous question is uh, for everyone, do you all have a favorite line or song from the show? Um, and if so, can we hear it, please? Is there <laughs> I guess if there's one that hasn't come out yet, we can't hear anything, but there's been a good few so far. Um, Favorite but, line or song? Line or song. Um, and I guess we'll uh, start with you, Richard. Let's see. Uh, well, I, of course, love Oh Millie. I just yeah. think it's a sweet song. Um, oh, what a thrill when the crimson starts to spill. Um, and I love, um, I loved um, when I when I sing. Um, you say the price <laughs> of my love's not a price that you're willing to pay. You cry in your tea, which you hurl in the sea when you see me go by. Why so sad? Uh, we don't sing that in this, do we? <laughs> no, I'm pretty sure I would get in trouble. <laughs> okay, well, then that was my bad. I guess we can't use that. Uh, I just, I think that I, we have a we have some a future thing coming up that I'm really really happy with. It's a future song, and it's it's, and I think you know which one it is that I'm talking about. I think I know. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's my favorite. You, you everyone's mm -hmm. gonna love that. I think. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. And oh, crumbs. oh, crumbs has become quite, quite big. Oh, crumbs. Okay. Oh, I know. I know my favorite line thus far. A oh, human no. called me a possum. I am oh. not a possum. <laughs> that's, I think that's my favorite. <laughs> With the eyes going in yeah. all directions. <laughs> Brandon, do you have a favorite line or something? Uh, my favorite everything is in an episode far in the future that we have already, it's all in the bag, already recorded. It has, it is one that I have written, but has nothing to do with why it's my favorite. It is, it has all my, it just all the, everything I ever want in a hell of a boss episode um, is in this particular one. And uh, everyone will know which episode it is because I will ring bells and whistles on all my socials being like, this is, it might be my favorite episode of the entire series. And so um, I just can't wait to get to that. That, that is very, that is a futuristic um, yeah. <laughs> ambition of mine to see that reaction. So, um, yeah, it's it's a uh, lot of lot of car stuff. I'll say there's an episode, a lot of lot of a lot of car stunts that we I couldn't have never been able to afford to do in real life. And so, I wrote a lot of flying <laughs> through the air and shit. <laughs> has nothing to do with lines, but it's it's my favorite <laughs> everything going forward. Absolutely, uh, Vivian. My favorite song is Stolas's Astrology, Astrological. Oh, yeah. Ooh. Yeah, that's that beautiful. beautiful. What is it called? Uh, the, the song, you, I think it's You Will called, Be Okay. Uh, you Will Be Okay, yes. <laughs> you Will Be Okay, guys. Bryce. <laughs> to be fair to me. Oh, am I the only one saying this? <laughs> Come on. Sounds like, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> I actually I cried the first time I, I heard it. It was so powerful and beautiful really like it was very yeah it was one of the, it's one of the most beautiful songs i've ever seen animated and i'm a disney kid <laughs> and that was one of the most just all the elements every department shined through so so good in that moment and the lyrics oh my god <laughs> 
I agree. And, and I, I was so proud of that. I mean, I'll just say it like I, I'm, I, I didn't know what to expect recording for a song for animation. And I just, you guys made it look just stunning. And, um, yeah, we, uh, my, my kids watch it. Oh, <laughs> uh, I watch, you know, I watch it with my kids. Um, that's the only part of the show they get to watch. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, um, yeah, obviously I, I, I love that song. And, um, but I also love some of the lines from uh, earlier episodes, like um, "A Lulu Land." Obviously, is is, is such a stolas heavy episode um, that's out already that that I, I love. And when I say um, "We're rich and we're hot," people want our money and our bodies. <laughs> you know, I just love that. That like really, s it's a revelation of character. You know. <laughs> um, and, uh, when I read that line, I was like, I love this show. Um, but I'm really looking forward to, to stuff that we've already recorded. I think, as I said, uh, you never know what's going to happen on the day of, of, of a performance or a recording um, session. But at the end, like I'm left with that feeling of like, oh, now, how, now, how long do I have to wait to, to actually see it all put together? Because, um, with Richard and Viv's help, you know, some of, some of the stuff that you gave, stole us to do i'm just really excited for people to see again further into what they think they know about a about a character um so I'm excited for that coming up i have a question um because i haven't been so lucky to record a song yet uh do you guys do that on the day when you're when you're doing your your script stuff everything um Richard can help answer that. We we have it scheduled to do, um, and um, it, we we do it on its own day. Okay. Uh, we do it on its own musical day, um, but we we do it just like um, we record our dialogue, except that we we usually, if we're lucky enough to have the composer with us, mm -hmm. he kind of takes the reins as far as making sure that um, everyone is you know sounding good and in in. Uh, following the tempo and and it's it, it gets tricky sometimes with the tempo via zoom but we've been very yeah. yes. very oh, fortunate that um everything lines up well uh but yeah. we have done songs uh we did one of my favorites i forgot this one my favorite one of my favorite moments is in the norman Reedus episode uh the last episode we did mm -hmm. that we did that during his record so we did the song and yeah and his uh, oh. dialogue on the same day. But when you're just sitting there, you just hear in the background, go fuck yourself, Moxie. It's one of my favorite moments ever because it's in the middle of the scene, but it's there's enough separation that you just hear him say, go fuck yourself, Moxie. Yeah. <laughs> I, I love that. Um, when I was first listening to the demo and that part happened, I was like, okay, this is, this is perfect. And it, it's, it was, that one was so fun to record. Yeah, I was I was gonna say I think the the songs are probably the most challenging part during during quarantine, you know, during over Zoom because there is like a track that we're playing back and like also you know to do a song take the difference between songs and 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 lines is obviously it's like you have to run through the whole song and so like it's a lot of you know kind of that full listen through. It's a treat every time. I, I love hearing everyone get to perform the song all the way through. It's very, it's it's an amazing experience um, from my end. And, and that's also something that I actually don't, it's like the one thing that I don't really do with the audio is um, as of right now, so far we've had the the songwriter take those, those um, takes and then they find the best um, performance of the song. And so when I hear the song for the first time, all finished, it's like hearing it for the first time. It's like really cool. Um, it's an amazing process. It, it's, yeah. And it's fun. It's just as fun <clears throat> to do the recording of the music as it is to do the dialogue. Um, because, you know, once you get that song down and they've been, you know, I can't speak for Bryce because he had probably the most intricate of the songs thus far. Um, and, you can speak and, and for me. James, you and James, yeah, you and James have had the, um, I would say the the most intricate musical things to do. Would you agree, Viv? Yeah, so far. Yeah. Um, obviously, we're we're gearing up right now to record songs for for the next season, 
and the songs in this season, I'm, uh, it's, it's, I'm so excited. Like, I, I don't want to make it sound like it's going to be a nightmare. I, it's like so exciting. Like, I think. Can you yeah. confirm or deny whether my Millie will get to sing in one of these songs? Yeah, Millie will get to sing in, in okay, the next season and everything. Yeah, I want to, I'm, I'm trying more to find, because the only challenge between this show um, and, and another show that I, I work on is that I wanted the musical style to be as, um, I always mess up which one, diegetic, like when the world, music is in the world, um, actually, like it's less of like a Broadway or like a Disney musical where the characters can burst into song and it be like very, that's part of this world. Um, the, um, the hell of a rules that I try to maintain are that there's a little bit of a reason for the like, see if a scene gets like fantastical or everything, there's a little bit more of like a reason, like it's a, a drug trip or it's a, on the radio or, or like, you know, more of an expression of a character, but like the, it, the song like started in reality or in this world's reality. So um, it's a little more challenging to come up with ways for there to be a song in every episode, but I'm very determined to make sure there's like a song in every episode. And I think, in season two there's only one episode that doesn't have a song and it's kind of that's the significance of that you know like it's like oh this is the one episode like it's kind of special in that way and um so it's it's very fun to like figure out how to to have an excuse for all the characters to sing because some of the characters aren't like musical theater nerds like moxie moxie's very easy it's easy to get moxie to sing because he'll sing it any I'll you say, say the price <laughs> of my love's not a price that you're willing to pay very true to life <laughs> they say George Washington's yielding his power and stepping away. Is that true? <laughs> um, and then real fast before we, we miss uh, the, the ending question is, um, Erica, did you have a favorite line or song? Um, uh, I would say like, I love the I love the episode. I forget what it's called, but there's only Luna only has one line, and it's just "shut the fuck up." But like it blew up the internet. Yeah, I loved I loved that. Um, and uh, yeah, I loved the um, I loved Bryce's song. Uh, the you will be okay. Um, that one was so so beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, this is this is a good question. I guess it's a good question for for Richard. Um, as well as me, but I'm trying to remember. Um, they said, uh, are, are there any like blooper moments that have stuck out? And I, I guess that can turn into a question of like, is there, is there a line, um, and we don't have to be specific if some episode in the future, but it, was there ever a line that like was hard to do, you know, like, like kind of got stuck on or, or tricky and there was a lot of like fun mistake <laughs> or fun, you know, um, I, I'm trying to remember. I I, I don't feel like, like you guys would go because, on it. There's not a lot of like mistakes yeah. made ever. It's hard uh, because we're moving so fast. You know, yeah. it's like we're doing so much at once, um, recording so many episodes at once that nothing specifically stands out for me. Um, what what stands out for me mostly is uh, is everybody's improv because we let everyone say and do what they want. We say, we get the line recorded as written and then we say, now do do it however you want. And, and everyone that's here and, and in the cast and even our guest actors, when you give them that freedom, really come up with some really surprisingly uh, body stuff and funny stuff. So uh, it's hard to just name one. I mean, like Brandon, is a perfect example and Eric also they 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 will go on and on and on and on with different things and different takes until we go okay we got it but then please please, please stop please no, stop no, no. Erica pl Erica please Erica we only have an hour fuck come on yeah but no but really what will happen with with both of them in particular is that they will stumble upon something and then Vivi and I will both at the same time because Vivi and I are on camera together going yeah like yeah that one that one um, they'll come up with something that we didn't think of and we'll say, oh, let's do like three takes of that in particular. So yeah, that, that's what I think of mostly more than I think of uh, like a blooper. Yeah. Hey, I, I'll say, I'll say blooper wise, the hilarity of me trying to get some, get some good growls, uh, <laughs> that, that it just took, it just took me a while. Cause I can't do the like snort growl thing. So I kind of have to just do like that. <sighs> like 
I, it's a, it's a whole damn thing. And, uh, I think we usually out of like five minutes of trying to do it, we get like one or two that'll, that'll work. So I'm very passionate. I'm a hard worker. And you know what? That's what matters. <laughs> I do. You're, my a, best. you're a hard player pretender. <laughs> yes. Oh my God. I think the, I think the most difficult thing to record on that show is, uh, was loop de goop de. I remember coughing a lot <laughs> because I don't, you know, when like you scream so much to where you're, it's all dry here and then you're just coughing and coughing. Everything he said was the loudest way you can say it. And um, <laughs> I was very, I was just coughing all the time. And uh, yeah, but the show is, other than that, it's so it's, I don't, I don't, I can't recall any like funny mess ups that were, I mean, every, every moment we're, we're just laughing all the time. And so it's hard to distinguish and we're messing up all the time too. And so it's like, it's hard to distinguish which mess up and which laughter was like the best of the, you know, we're just constantly yeah. laughing and messing up and trying new things. And, um, and it's hard to tell, it's hard to remember what was originally in the script and which lines were improvised. Cause I'll look at, I'll look at an original script. And I'm like, oh, this part of dialogue is totally different. Like we, we totally played around and changed this and that. So, yeah, it's kind of cool where you don't see where the writing ends and the improv begins. Some shows you can kind of see that. And I'm glad you can't with this one. Also, something that I, for, for anyone who's like an aspiring voice actor out there, this weird misconception that I used to have that in, in, in records, you had to be perfect all the time. I remember it was shattered for me when like five years ago, I booked like my first regular role on an animated series. And I remember walking in and everybody was like, it was all heavy hitters. And we started the record and I remember everybody flubbed constantly all the time. And I realized I was so scared because I was like, oh my God, oh my God, if I mess up one line, if I flub one line and I have to start over, like they're gonna just, they're gonna send me out. I'm, I'm not gonna be good enough. And it was so heartening to see that like the best of the best, it's just a thing that happens all the time when you're recording voiceover. It's just a lot of lines and you're gonna mess up. So it's not that we don't have mess ups. It's just that it's so, it's such a part of what we do or like flubs. It's, it's constant. It's all the time. So just don't, don't think that you have to be, you know, perfect uh, to do voiceover, like not, not flub a line. Yeah. Some days I feel really like, so there are some days I'm an hour into it and I'm just like, oh my God, like, come on, just let you warmed up by now. Like it's, and, and then I'll, I'll hear the episode and I'll be like, oh, I remember being so insecure when I recorded that. And that was funny. So I trust your guys. You, you guys have such a, if you're like, we got it. And I'm like, are you sure? And like, yes, you've given us 20. <laughs> well, created a safe space. You don't always work in an environment where you feel supported and you guys are just so supportive. And it's so great to, to have that, to work with it. It allows us freedom and uh, more security than maybe we would have. Like Brandon said, we do feel insecure at times. So having your support and your, your safe space and like you guys are, cheerleaders in the room, which is awesome because you don't always get that. Yeah, I, I think it's very important. Uh, I This is just a real quick story, Viv, but I went to um, Robert De Niro's induction into the AFI and James Woods got up and told the story about how they were shooting a movie called um, Once Upon a Time in America. And it's a great movie if you ever get a chance to see it. But, but what happens is there's a scene that's coming up on the Friday that they're shooting where um, Robert De Niro hasn't seen James Woods in years. And now James Woods is suddenly like exceptionally wealthy. And Robert De Niro says to James Woods, he says, um, you know, you're shooting that scene on, on, on Friday, you should have makeup get you a teeth appliance because when people get money, the first thing they do is they fix their teeth. And James thought that was brilliant because he was thinking story. So he goes to the makeup trailer and they say, you know what, that would cost $10,000 to get that done by Friday and we don't have it in the budget. And so James says, okay. So he comes into the, the trailer on Friday uh, for to shoot and he goes into makeup and there's the teeth appliance. And they said, I thought it wasn't the budget, says James. And the, the makeup artist said it wasn't, Bobby paid for it. So he went up to Bobby De Niro and said, Bob, why did you do that? And Robert De Niro said, because if you look good, we all look good. And mm. that, stuck with me forever that it, it's not about us individually as much as it is about this world that we're creating and that is that to me I live by that is that you know it's hard sometimes with our insecurities like you were talking about Vivian to 
to get out of the way and just let the story do the work, you know? And that's, that's brilliant on the show with everyone that works on it is that everyone is working their hardest or playing their hardest to get the best show for everyone. So yeah, that's all I have to say. One thing I can add to that is just that like, I like, personally, like I subscribe to the fact, like to the idea that, you know, I, I have a vision and I have a, I have a, you know, a story and, and characters and, and my job is just to make sure that that's maintained. But like, what really brings it out is what you guys bring to it. And that's, you know, like embodying the characters. And um, so I don't really feel like I, like there's, I don't think there's really like, I think like me and you, Richard, sometimes we'll have like, you know, it's like sometimes like a, a line will be improvised, but then you'll catch like, oh, well, but later there's a line that like, yeah. is relying on that line or something. So we'll have to, you know, there's, there's certain reasons where we'll like keep to the script, but for the most part, what I want is it to be like expanded in, in what you guys as the, as, as the actors um, for these characters, like think for them, you know? And I, I, I'm happy that like, that, that one of my favorite <laughs> moments was with Vivian just very recently where I thought I had this inspired brilliant note and I, I think I, I, I think I, I think it was for Brandon or I said uh, or maybe it was Bryce actually it was like oh he should say this here blah 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 and Vivian's like oh yeah okay good and then we record it and then it's the next line in the script oh yes, and yes. Like, and you're like you knew that was the next line right you didn't come up with that joke it was already there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So like in instances like that, it's like we have to maintain the, the script. But for, for the most part, like I just I, I love when it gets I love when it gets changed. And I'm, I'm, I'm glad that like just the way like I want to go at things that that's not something I get hung up on. You know, like there's never like a I've, I've never once been like Mm, it's not the joke isn't as funny you know like or you know whatever like I'm like no like because I I genuinely feel like you know you guys add so much so I'm not married to what's there if it means that it'll be stronger or more in character or more um you know unique and so like I don't I never like want you ever to feel like you know an idea that you put forth or, or say is it in any way not gonna be like you know, like potentially perfect for, you know, the actual show and for the, you know. I'm laughing at the cat porn video going on in Erica's. <laughs> <laughs> it's like cat porn right now. <laughs> uh, Aww. They love to steal the spotlights like that. I love I know, cats. I do. I do love them. I wish I wasn't allergic to, there are a lot of cats I, I, I'll still touch them and I'll put my face on them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I'll I'll have the flu for the next day. <laughs> oh. Oh. I was I was gonna say that um also part of the environment that you guys create that I think is helpful to all of us is is one with laughter and like it really makes me as a performer like I'm 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 constantly in search of the blooper like of the fail and i want the performance to be like just on the other side of that like if i can get us to the place where we haven't cracked up but it's really funny like i just remember doing some <laughs> some improvised uh sexy time sounds and just being like okay i've got to get this but i also was like just trying to make the room laugh trying to make myself laugh and as erica said like to the aspiring uh, voice actors out there and just actors out there i think if you're if you're right on the edge of making yourself laugh and your collaborators laugh like i, I think that's where you want to be and so you don't have to try and do what you think other people is going to be funny like i just try and make myself laugh and usually usually if the people in the room are generous they're able to laugh along and say hey that was hilarious let's also try it this way you know so I, I think that laughter in the in the rooms we create is really valuable and 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 helps to create that freedom, especially when you're being asked to, you know, improvise a sexy time noise. <laughs> it's sexy time. <laughs> well, I have to say, Bryce, because of you, I 
I can't say peanut butter and jelly sandwiches in my head the same way anymore. I hear I hear peanut butter the same way, but then I hear jelly sandwiches. And <laughs> it has it has permanently uh, permanently marked that word for me. I'm very was happy that, was about that. You that. Did it? Like was that just you ramble? Like what were you saying during that? I don't remember. It was a full on like let's let Bryce out of the cage and we'll just see where he goes. <laughs> Um, um and uh yeah I, I don't i don't remember it was it was a long improv where they just yeah. I, I think it was like one of the first things we did actually in the room and i remember thinking like well they're just gonna have to cut me off like don't, don't wait for them to stop you just keep going and like they'll cut around whatever they don't want to use and i think like that is a that is a thing that i i, I try to teach students when i'm lucky enough to teach them is that sometimes you don't have to know where you're going. You just have to stay on the train, especially in, in improvisatory settings. Like you don't have to like every moment of your improv, but if you just keep rolling and don't judge that you end up talking about peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, like you might create something really funny that you couldn't have planned. And like, that is the goal I think of, of improv is to find something you couldn't have planned by just, letting right. your imagination it, kind of carry you somewhere. Right, because if you've planned it, that's called rewriting. <laughs> you know, I mean, I call it a, a carefully rehearsed improvised line. Um, but you're absolutely right about that. And, and every one of you does that so magnificently when we're in recordings. It's, it's great. I mean, I think, I think there's at least, how much percentage wise, Vivian, would you say we uh, use something that they've improvised as the line oh like yeah like 90 percent. yeah i would agree yeah I it's agree. Re it's very rarely like like because usually that's the one that was like this kind of wild take that was just so fun and so funny and it made us laugh it made us laugh yeah yeah and it can't quite be replicated because you know it wasn't what was done three times you know like usually we only get like one of that like improvised line but it's always so fun that you know, it's just what feels right for the episode. And so I, I love getting to do that. And it's such a, it's such a, you know, the, the art of animation and, and all this, and I'm sure live action as well, but like, you know, is like the collaboration of writer and actor and um, animator and, you know, like all those things like together to kind of like elevate something to like the, the top, you know, the, the funniest or the, or the most like expressive it can be. So it's always awesome. Did everyone get to answer that one? I know that one being very broad. <laughs> it's tricky because so many of the questions are very specific, you know, when is this, when is that? Like, so I'm trying to pick the ones that are like, you know, not spoiler or not like nitty gritty and stuff like that. Um, but this one's a fun one. Um, uh, you all are wonderful and give so much life to these characters. Speaking of life, my question is, if you could give life advice to your character, what would it be and how do you think they would take it? Now let's start with Brandon. <laughs> oh God, oh God, you know, uh, be, be happy, just be happy you are surrounded, be, be happy, just be happy that you're surrounded with by people who love you, I think, I think. I think he's surrounded by people who love him, people who, at least one person who wants him. So I'd uh, be happy you got that because I don't have an eight foot tall owl waiting for me in a fucking bell tower, all right? So just stop being such a, you know, although most of the images, the fan arts, he's always smiling. So I think he's happy. Just keep doing what you're doing, Blitz. You're doing great. <laughs> Erica? I would say, uh... I would say try to try your, your damnedest to accept the fact that there are people that love you unconditionally with n n not everybody has an ulterior motive. Like not everybody's trying to, trying to hurt you. There are some people who just love you because you're you. That's also something to myself that I've been dealing with in the last couple of years, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> I need to find who hurt you. <laughs> and then I need to find a dumpster. <laughs> um, <clears throat> hard one. Um, 
I guess as far as the, the workforce is concerned, I would say it's okay to think before you kill, Millie. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect advice. Um, Bryce. Yeah, my, my mind goes to, um, you know, Stolas's daughter. And, you know, I would say to him, don't miss it. You know, because as Richard was saying before the call, like it, go, it goes by really quick when you're when you're a parent. And I think the um, in his world, like time is not really something he must worry about. But it doesn't mean that that time with your child uh, is repeatable. So um i don't know i just feel that way because i'm a father and um newly newly a father so i think that's a part of him that i really um identify with and and that's something i'm constantly saying to myself when i'm finding myself drawn back to to work and as our industries start to come back like i'm i'm trying to make sure that i also don't miss you know my my kids and them growing up in these crucial moments because um so, so that would be one piece of advice, and then the other would be live your life because you know, uh, as we're as we're gonna find out more about about Stolas and and sort of how how he's uh, finds himself in the situation he's in, um, I think he's he's realizing too that he can love who he wants to love, and um, he can be his most authentic self, and and that's a beautiful like reinforcement for for everyone out there. Um, so, so yeah, those would be my two things I'd say to him. Otherwise I'd say, you're doing great. You got the book, like you're good. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Uh, Richard. Uh, I would say Moxie, keep on singing. <laughs> say, keep on singing, keep on loving and appreciate what you have in Millie, which I think he does. <laughs> All right. Uh, and I think. I think that we've talked about this before, but I think that the relationships of this show are so, uh, everybody, uh, Brandon pointed it out last time, was that everybody has a relationship in this show that they're dealing with yeah. on some level, which is what makes what Erica was saying um, earlier even more valid and pertinent is that yeah, we're funny and we're wacky, but when it comes down to it, there's there. It's mostly about the heart of this show, because there is a very strong. This is a show that is a paradox, and that we we're, we're murderers in hell, <laughs> but our show is predominantly about love and relationships, which in itself is brilliant. Good job, you two. <laughs> I like seeing how they like just wa watching animatics of future episodes and seeing how these characters handle certain curveballs that um you know hell throws at them uh you, you you know you can't whether or not you agree with how they react to it it's very real i mean I, I, like i think eric what you were saying earlier about that just because it's a cartoon and just because it's a comedy doesn't mean that it has that it can't be deep and it can't get sad and these characters you know they are capable of having their hearts broken and I think in a lot of cartoons, many characters aren't. And to see the depths in which these characters can find joy or suffer is so, so refreshing in, in this sort of medium of, um, what do you call it? This sort of, uh, this in animation, like especially YouTube independent animation like this, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, we, this is, this is, I'm like jerking our own shit. I'm, I'm just, <laughs> someone cut me off. I'm doing what I do in the studio. Well, something, something I will add to that that it's, it's just um, it's it's a it's a benefit to the way the show is made because you know obviously we don't have a massive you know company behind it. You know it's it's very made by love and 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 it's very scrappy and everything. But the the most exciting part for me as a as a writer. Um, and as a storyteller is just the freedom of being able to just go and, and there's no like higher authority other than us and each other of going like, you know, like, like we really are trying to find the heart of like a good story and good characters. And there's no like, you know, nobody that we have to answer to, um, you know, and there's no like concern about, you know, where it's going to air or, you know, who, 
who it needs to appeal to. It has, it, it gets to be its own very niche thing. And I think that's why it's found such a, an amazing audience. Like you guys watching it, like it's, it's from you and it's, and it's for you. And it's, and it's, um, because of that, there's, there's a lot of freedom that we have to like go for like good, you know, like a fun, good story with characters and, um, focus on their relationships and, um, I like writing things like that. So mm -hmm. I am very excited for like where it goes. Cause I, I kind of let myself go really like just lean fully into it. Um, and the comedy just comes, you know, the comedy will always come through it, but like the story is kind of like the thing that we had to break. And once it, once it was figured out, it's like, now I have the trajectory of exactly where the show goes and what we're, what we're building to um, with each character. So <laughs> it's very, very interesting how that's happened. <laughs> Um, uh, this is a specific question for Bryce. Uh, just what was your reaction when you got the role of horny bird or horny owl? <laughs> <laughs> Finally! Um, I, I, you know what? I was, I was cast in the middle of, you know, the earliest part of this pandemic and I was just, um, thankful to have something creative like be offered to me and it wasn't until really I got the episodes from you guys and, and got into the studio that I went oh my gosh this is a this is like a dream part to get to create something that doesn't exist and that sort of feels like what as animators and creatives you guys have done is create something that doesn't exist and um and a character that you could only dream up. You know, it's like you're the first person that gets to fill that with life um, through through the voice. And so I was thrilled. And a horny owl bird, I was like, I don't know what that's like, but I'm gonna fucking find out. <laughs> and uh, and yeah, so I was, I was thrilled and I was also scared. You know, excited and scared because you also have that feeling of like, well, this is in my hands now. This is in my voice now. So you feel a responsibility, but also an excitement of like, well, I can't do it the wrong way because it's me. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the audition is the hardest part, I always say, because I think once you're doing it, like you are doing it right because you're the person. Um, so so I was thrilled to be asked to, to invent something new. Absolutely, that's amazing. Um, and then uh, this question is for Brandon. So who is your favorite hell of a character besides Blitz? Uh, maybe Lu either Luna or, or, Ro or, or Robo, any of the sex bots. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the clown, where did that, uh, a sex clown singing, performing robot with holes, where did, like, how did, <laughs> When were you like, ah, this is... <laughs> well, th that was, okay, so so the Fizzerali character is a very interesting one. And obviously I can't get too into it because there's a lot to uncover about that character. But, yeah. I, but I remember it was when we were, we would go to Lancers and, and write um, together. And yeah. that was in, in, when we were developing Lululand, it was like, um, I, I knew that I wanted Blitz to have a rival, you know, right. like, a, like a rival... Um, and I love the idea that it's more from his clown, you know, like history than it is for, cause one of my earliest concepts for Blitz's rival was another assassin or a target that like ha had always evaded him, you know, and this is, we're talking like early, early like concept. Right. Right? Um, but then I think we got on that thread of, of, you know, uh, of the Luland episode. And I was like, no, I think maybe this character should be from his past, you know, like from his, um, his, his past like life and career. And that's where the initial concept for like, um, for the, for the clown, you know, the jester, uh, like kind of adversary, but then it kind of went further of like, oh, what if it's like, kind of like he, I think the original concept that I thought was funny was just the idea that he picks a fight with like the animatronic at this Chuck, you know, like, you know, like it's like someone's like arch enemy being like Chuck E. Cheese at this right. <laughs> like, <laughs> robot at this restaurant or something. Horrifying. I was, I grew up with, uh, 
And that was, those are horrifying things with their eyelids are kind of, they're kind of always having like a mild stroke at any given performance. And it's, it's the eyes and mouth don't line up to any of the words. Um, okay. I know. I, I love, yeah, I think, I think Robo Fizz is my, is, is my favorite, but, but he's also like the most similar to Blitz too. So I'm not really being adventurous with that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think uh, obviously, again, I can't talk too much about uh, the character, but I'm, I'm very interested for everyone to get to see the, the real character that the robots are based on and, and why there are robots and like all that stuff is like kind of unveiled over the course of, of uh, the future of the show. So um, it's going to be interesting to see all that. Oh. Um, let's see, I'm trying to find another question. Um, I asked that one. And Okay, what has been the biggest hurdle as an actor while playing your character? And I guess this could apply for voice acting in general. Is like, what, what do you think is the biggest hurdle to kind of overcome with it? And I guess we'll start with Erica. Oh, um, the biggest hurdle. I don't know. I don't. Um, she screams a lot. So sometimes I leave a little... Uh, <laughs> Like a, a little horse. I don't know, man. She feels so much a part of me that I, it's not, it doesn't, it feels like slipping on an old pair of boots, you know? Uh, yeah, I'd say, I'd say probably like just that she screams a lot. That's not a very interesting answer, but. <laughs> a valid one though. Cause it's definitely, um, it's definitely a lot. I will say uh, I briefly voice acted, you know, for the show and it's always so much fun because that's not really my world, but it's so fun to play in. And uh, yeah, you get really worn out, <laughs> like I've noticed. And like mm -hmm. the voice gets really, you have to like, I'm, I'm sure, and, and, and Richard, I'm sure you know the answer to this, but I'm sure it's like, there. it is like a balancing actor, like kind of teaching like physically how to like yeah, I, not I, get fatigued. I, I think in general, like, cause I, I don't really do a lot of yelly characters. So that's new to me uh, to have to yell in a character. But um, <laughs> I think the, the mistake that most people make is that they don't let the microphone do its job. They, they, they feel they have to project so much, but really you can get right up on a microphone and talk this loud and it's gonna sound loud in a microphone, you know? Yes. Uh, and so that's what blows people's voices out uh, eat quicker, uh, which is, you know, in all fairness, you know, I was joking about the the um, the yelly characters, but I let the microphone do its job and mm -hmm. I protect my voice. That's what you have to do. You know, singers know this. You don't, you know, there's a lot of tricks I've learned about those things. Um, for instance, like if your voice is hoarse <laughs> or you're in like a, the, you, your voice is hoarse, but then you go to this really loud environment you know you're in a in a restaurant or a bar it's like and people have a tendency to like to talk like this they go i know right right but if you use your lower frequency you can actually talk under the loud the the roar of a crowd yeah talk under it and people don't think about it it's like when you take a shower and you go oh i need more hot water instead of like well maybe i could just turn down the cold a little bit you know mm -hmm. um and so those are the kind of tricks you learn about that and, and, and erica's right the 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 yelling, particularly for her, because Luna doesn't like her. Her natural being is more just through with you guys. You guys are all assholes. And when she does yell, that's 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 definitely something that you know that Erica has to. Uh, we have to sometimes we have to say, "Can you yell louder, Erica?" <laughs> right? We, like, can you just yell louder? Yeah. I actually will say, I will say as far as hurdles go, because um, I did Millie and Luna for the pilot and I, for some reason, did not get the script. I remember that. I walked in and I hadn't gotten the script. I've, I've said this before. I'll say it again. I thought it was a furry fighting game. I did not know what I was walking into. <laughs> I was, E3 was happening at the time. Final Fantasy VII Remake had just been announced the night before. I'd been out all night. And I remember stumbling into this record and going like, okay, so I'm doing two characters that talk to each other. There's parts of a song I didn't know about. Uh, okay. like, I just remember like that, I would say, like it was, such a, it was such a cool experience. Like it's so fun. It's fun when they're like, all right, here's a challenge, like go for it. 
Yeah. Uh, but, yeah. I remember, I remember that. That was probably the biggest hurdle. Just that first day of being like, okay, there's all these things. I think I voiced, yeah, every female character in the pilot, except yeah. one, uh, except one nurse or something like. That was me. I was the, oh, I was the nurse. I think. Yeah. 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 Um, there's, um, so, yeah. Yeah, and, and it's fun fun fact to the audience also for that is that that's one of the reasons that Millie in the pilot isn't doesn't have the Southern accent because that was always the case. But um, I felt so bad because you you came in and we, for those like fun, fun, like production, uh, production fact is that like we, we were recording um, in person and that was amazing. And there was a good 30 minutes where we had everyone together for that pilot recording. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, it was kind of tricky because that was my first time meeting a lot of you. And it was a very hectic schedule because like, because of there was something with the studio where they didn't quite schedule it like the way I would have wanted, which is, you know, everyone at a time or at least shifted a little. So everyone came in like within an hour of each other. So we, like, we started with like Brandon and then and then Richard, I think then you arrived and that was both of you guys for a little bit. And then Erica, you arrived and it was, it was just really hectic. And so there wasn't a lot of time. Like we were really rushing to like, cause then also everyone would leave at different times. So it was like, we only had like, you know, you and Richard together for like a certain amount of time. So there was like no time to waste at all. And I felt horrible because I had wanted to like, you know, touch base and, and go over that voice and everything. And um, it was advised that I not. Um, and I don't know why, um, but it was, and I felt awful because then you come in and you're like, yeah, I don't know what I'm, I don't know what you want. Like, and I was, I like, was like, I was like, I don't even know what this is. I didn't know it was an animated thing. I was like, yeah. You know? Um, and you know, like I had wanted to do that, you know, because yeah, I was like, oh, well, you know, it was cast for Luna, but there is this other, cause that was the original, um, thing with the pilot also was I, I knew I was either going to find Amelia or Luna, and then we were going to record the other one, you know, based on that. But I did want. And, and that was kind of my idea for the character from the beginning was that she's like this, you know, spunky, um, you know, got the, the Western Southern accent. And, um, and I wasn't able to properly like explain that. And, and so I kind of just let you um, come up with what you wanted to come up with on the spot. And, um, and it, it's a great performance, but like, you know, I think that's what threw some people when she now, now she has this, you know, hilarious and, and adorable like Southern accent. And it's so much more like, to me, this is uh, the, the Millie that it's always meant to be. Oh, totally, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Like Absolutely. Vivian, you, you are uh, who I always wanted for Millie. And, um, but I think that's why, you know, to some people it was a little different. Like they're like, well, that's different. And I'm like, yeah, well, it was supposed to be like that. So just, I wanted to share that. Like, like guys, like it was never, not the case it's just we had like kind of a production story behind like why um so fun fact yes, about I, I hope one day we can shoot together again that was yeah. fun mm -hmm. that was I really was, fun that was a, a really fun like for me it was a first time ever like I was never I'd never um uh been in the room and in a booth with with actors before especially for one of my projects so I'm really excited for um getting to do that with you guys someday like I'm really hoping that the yeah. next time like we get to do that I know like things are starting to go back to normal but um but that's like my biggest like dream for <laughs> for um for for future recording sessions is getting to do that so but um but yeah like I I think that what you bring to Millie Vivian is like just exactly what I wanted and it's such a it's such a great performance and i i love listening to it every time it's always like the best also um, uh viv just so you know that like i don't i mean i didn't view that production day as as like disjointed at all like part of the job of what we do is walking in getting new scripts and having to do four different characters that talk to each other like that's completely normal so it's not like that was a i was like oh my god whoa like what am i gonna do but yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, it was, I thought it was a really fun process. Also, when you're doing a pilot, like that's, there's going to be growing pains. It's the first time. Oh you're, yeah. You're doing no, a thing. Was, yeah. Totally. It was definitely for me, it was just being thrown into the deep end. I had never mm, yeah, done yeah. In studio. I never did. It was, and it was an, a magical experience and I'm so, I'm really excited to go in now. Cause like even um, Richard and like, we haven't been able to be in person when we've directed everyone. So it's, it's I'm, something I'm really looking forward to, like, especially now that it's like the cast in the series and we've gotten 
to, to, to get to know each other uh, more and, and we've gotten to record so many episodes, it's just going to be, it's going to be an extra magical experience to, yeah. to, to be in the room with you guys when you're, when you're doing the incredible work that you do. Um, but to, to go back to the question, I guess, um, uh, Vivian, if you, were there any hurdles or, or is there any like voice acting hurt, you know, anything that I feel like this question comes a lot from people wanting to get into voice acting and um, it's definitely what Richard addressed, which is uh, so many violent efforts. You know, I've <laughs> I've never done something that requires so much fighting and it was so exciting. So the first day we recorded, we did we did eight episodes and Millie is the most violent, loudest one. <laughs> and I blew my voice out. I mean, I, I felt like I was hemorrhaging the next day. <clears throat> So um, I really had to work my muscle and say, okay, next time we go in, I'm not going to do that. And I placed almost everything um, in my nasal and that really changed, you know, the whole session, because if you get to episode four and you're blown out, what are you going to do? Millie is not in my register. So I had to be really careful and sensitive as to, you know, how I played those efforts. So that was definitely the greatest challenge for me. Absolutely. Yeah, that, that, um, that definitely was like, uh, so such a like, because you're, you're, yeah, you're, you're, you're doing such a like, specific, like character voice, and then you have to be the most yeah. <laughs> vicious fighter. <laughs> yeah. And, and like I said, it's, it's easy to get in the studio and get carried away because you're having so much fun. You're in the moment and you want to deliver and, you know, Richard's directing and sometimes he'll say, oh, why don't you try this? And I might try that in Richard's voice, which is going to blow out Vivian's voice. So I had to go, oh, let me find Millie's fight, which lives higher. Absolutely. That's right. You know, that's, that goes to what I was saying before that, that people often think that they have to go lower on something. And so they're, they're pushing their voice down and that's gonna blow your voice out much quicker. But there's always the possibility to go up here and it's more protective up here than it is here. Cause that's gonna blow you out. Like yeah. mm -hmm. it's, the, it's totally the Broadway singer's approach. And I just didn't, I didn't throw that cap on when, I, when we first got in the booth, I didn't. And one of the things I'll say is like, Vivian, let's try one where your vocal cords start to bleed. And you're like, I, I, is that right? I'm like, oh yeah, that's, that's how we do it. Just trust me on this. <laughs> um, Brandon, did you, do you know what might have been the biggest hurdle? The, um, uh, uh, I, 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 breath economics is something that I've had to learn doing voice work that I haven't had to learn doing on camera acting for some reason. I think because when I'm doing voice work, I'm using so much more breath to do, and I'll never inhale enough air to get the fucking line delivered. And I'll, then I'll be talking like this and I'll get it right down here. And then I have to, and so, and then I'm coughing and I'm embarrassed and all this stuff. And so it's like, do I, did I deliver it too hard or did I not take in enough air? And, uh, and it becomes this weird balancing act of, of trying, because then, I want, I want my lines to come out very, very fast with no gap for, a, and so it's like, how do I then deliver it with one breath and get it out there and have the last syllable be the strongest still. And so that's the biggest hurdle. Some of the lines take me quite some breath work to get, get through. <laughs> Absolutely. And then uh, Bryce, what have you found to be the, the biggest I would, I would say, um, and this is like an, op this is like an open discussion to the group is, one of the biggest hurdles that I find is when my voice won't do something that I want it to do. And so, or that I wish it could do. And I, I had to learn this as a singer. Like there are, there are other people's voices that I wish I could imitate that I can't. And like, once I found the acceptance of that, like, no, this is my voice. And these are the things that are great about it. I don't have to worry that I can't do it like Richard does it. I can do it like I do it. And like, so I don't know, I'm imagining there's a young voice actor out there who might like to hear that. Um, and then the other thing that I, that I find, I don't know if you guys do, is sometimes I feel like 
there's a stumbling block when the character is not voiced in, in something very close to my speaking voice. Sometimes I, I have to f feel like I found the voice again. And one of the ways that I've found doing that is like a, a line or like a key phrase that I know I can sort of always reproduce. And so like before, sometimes before we do a take, I'll just go, oh, Blitzy. <laughs> and then like I can find some some like pathway to Stolas's voice. Um, and that, but that's a stumbling block. Cause sometimes you're like, wait, no, that's not his voice. That's somebody else's voice. Or like, that's a different accent or, you know? Mm -hmm. So I think, I think there are stumbling blocks in, uh, in feeling like your, your voice is authentic as is. And what it does is special enough. It, and when it doesn't do things like that's okay. And two, um, finding like recreating the voice that you've owned for a while, but you know, we, we went what a year without recording anything. And so I felt like I have to go embody that, find that voice again, um, in order to, in order to bring the character to life in a way that I want to. Um, so I would, those are my two stumbling blocks. I'm curious if anyone has like, you know, advice about what, what, what do you, how have you gotten around that? Or have you had that moment of, I wish my voice would do that thing and it doesn't. And I feel bad about that. And I want to quit. <laughs> uh, I mean, I, I have, uh, I was in, I've, I do a lot of video game work and I did a, a lot of like battle chatter screaming when I first started. And I have a, I have a, like a node on one of my vocal cords now. Um, and so I experience a lot of, uh, it, when I get, there's just a certain range where I will experience a lot of pitch break. Um, and, the, and I just can't, there's just certain things I can't, I can't do the way that I used to, but what I realized is, uh, it's what gives me like my rasp that I am like known for and book a lot of stuff because of, because of like the texture that my voice now has. So I've learned to take care of my voice better. Also, I could, my, my laryngologist was like, we can, we can lop this off. I don't know if, as long as it doesn't get any worse, like you're okay. And so I've just learned to take care of my voice better. And it's kind of like, I'm like, ah, is this like, this is like an anime protagonist origin story. Like it's like, it's like, ah, that, which like hurt me also made me stronger in a way. So yeah. <laughs> just kind of like leverage, leverage the things that, that maybe, maybe something that could be to your detriment, like gives, gives you it. God, how, lop it, how do they lop it off? They're just, very, very carefully. Oh my God. Yeah. It's so scary. It's like LASIK for your voice. It's Kinda, like, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I need to take, I don't take any care of my voice. I'm screaming every session. And so I'm scared hearing these stories. I'm like, <laughs> oh shit. Because it does, if I do, I do have a very sore voice and I go home. And I wake up and I think, thank God these days aren't consecutive. Like they do stagger them out like, oh, Wednesday, Friday, you know, and I go, thank God, because I wouldn't be able to do that. I'd come in and just be blitz again for, you know, four or six, however long we shoot. Um, yeah. I don't practice. I need to learn these tricks because I just... I don't even warm up. I will, it'll, at some point I will start asking like, am I blitz yet? Am I blitz? Is he here? And, and <laughs> if I feel like I'm just me, but slightly louder so most of the time. Yeah, that's, it's, it's really like, I mean, I'm, I'm not a voice actor, you know, by trade, but like, I, I definitely, um, I feel like, like I agree, like finding the voice or like finding it a second time um, is a challenge. Cause like I, so I voice um, Keeney, uh, the cherub and like, um, you know, it's, it's, it's an interesting voice. Um, and, but finding it that second time when we went back to record an, a new episode, like I was like, yeah, like it's like hearing we we saw we got played a reference as well like that's a nice helpful thing as well which is like a reference if, if there's a struggle um we play the reference for the actor or you know in, in my case that that's what really helped me when I was you know because I was just like I because I know I know and actually this is this is a question I have for you guys is that like you know I know there's a voice in your head and it's different from what is recorded you know it's a little bit different and I'm so interested to like know 
kind of how, how that is, like, how do you, how do you know, like, is it just a feeling? Um, because I feel like for me, it's like, I'll hear the reference and I feel like I almost like do do it a little, little hot, you know, like, I think like when I did, I maybe did her a little higher or something because like I heard the reference and I was trying to imitate that because it was my recorded voice, but in my head, I'm, I feel like I'm deeper. So it's, it's interesting. Like, I don't know. How does, how does that kind of like, is it, has there ever been a situation where you feel like, um, the recorded voice like sets a different bar than, or is it really just naturally feeling the voice? I feel like, cause you guys get the character right every time. Like, mm-hmm. so it's just interesting it's for me as an outsider, <laughs> even like just, I'm interested in that. Like, I'll, I guess I'll start with Richard, like there. It's like, what? <laughs> <laughs> like, like, is there ever any doubt of like, how you hit that, no, you know? No, not for me because, <laughs> well, only because I have a, a philosophy about voiceover in general, you know? When when you get into voiceover, especially in animation, you have this, this uh, notion that you need a thousand different voices to even be a viable animation actor. You know, Frank Welker and a bunch of people. And if you have that gift, that's wonderful. But it doesn't preclude you from having a voiceover career. Because as I always say, you always know that it's me in a show. You always know it's me. And yet mm-hmm. I've done, you know, hundreds of jobs. And that's because, as I said earlier, the voice is the work of the spirit. You know, the voice comes out the way you're playing, you're playing pretend, um, you know? Um, and if I get so focused on the voice, I had, a, I, had a, I had a theory or a philosophy when I first started is that, you know it's Robert De Niro in every single movie you see. His voice in Meet the Parents is the same as his voice in the Casino or any of those other things, but you follow him into the story. And I know for a fact I'm not gonna book every single job. I know that, but I know that what I am gonna book is going to be something that's right for me. And so, yes, I'll listen to a reference. I think if you go back, I think there's, you know, there's some inconsistency in all of our voices if we are doing a voice. It just is. We just do. But if that becomes more important than the story, then that's what you're going to be thinking of. That's going to be what you're focusing on. And it's going to be even worse for you. But if the story becomes more important for you than the voice and you trust the, the, the director and the creator to say, you know what, can you listen to the reference again? It happens to us all the time. All the time, Erica will tell you, they'll go, wait, you've lost it, listen again. Oh, okay, and then we go. And there's no shame in that, there's no embarrassment. It's exactly the same as uh, Erica said about we flub all the time, it's actually part of the fun. Um, it's different now, because when I started in, at, I started like Hanna-Barbera way back when, and that was on tape. So if you flubbed then, it was a little bit more anxiety provoking because it's on tape and it has to be edited and we have to start over again. But with digital, I mean, you guys heard of digital, right? It's like, you've heard of the interweb? A lot of the stuff on that is digital. Um, the hottest thing. Yeah, it's the hottest thing. All the kids are doing it. Yeah. Um, it doesn't matter if we flub. We can, we can just pick up right where we are and pick up because we can just edit that out with one you know, highlight and delete. Um, but as far as worrying about the voice, I don't worry about the voice because I, you know, I don't do a million voices. I create characters and each character has a different story, a different want and a different you know, aim in this story. And you could argue that Zim sounds like chaos and I won't, I won't disagree with you. <laughs> Zim does sound like chaos because you know, a lot of the times they want you to do that kind of thing, um, but it's a different world that I'm existing in as that person. The, the animation is different. I look different. My wants in that story. And the fact of the matter is, is that I never have anxiety about being replaced because it happens, it, I've been replaced before. There's nothing I can do about that. And so I, I know many people know my mantra, but it's my mantra that I live by. Um, we all get anxiety, we all get anxious. And first you have to know my definition of anxiety is the imagined belief that you will be unable to handle whatever it is you imagine happening. It's an imagined belief you will be unable to handle whatever it is you imagine happening. And so when you imagine it, it becomes real in your imagination. And that, that dictates how we speak and how we play. Because what we choose to believe is true 
is how we talk. It just is. That's the way life is. And so when I get that anxiety in the booth and I still get it, um, I can tell you a story about how I went back to do the Zim movie. And I thought, boy, my voice is, you know, 20 some odd years different now because it's hoarser and older. Um, I just say to myself, I'll see what happens. I'll handle it. I'm okay. I'll see what happens. I'll handle it. I'm okay. And that's what I keep reminding myself every time I worry about not getting that voice. And it was a little bit more deep um, than your question, Vivian. <laughs> but, but the reason for it for me is because I never let that get in my way of the story because my, my problems in the secondary reality as moxie or an alien or as a ruler of worlds or as a, as a god or as being in a love triangle or being a spy far outweigh the concerns of my primary reality of, boy, I hope I book this job. Boy, I hope they like me. Boy, I hope I don't trip on this word. Boy, I hope my agent doesn't drop me. <laughs> it, that Those things, like, I, I don't waste time with anymore. I did it when I was very young, but... It's a long thing. Listen to a voice reference. That's how you get your voice. <laughs> yeah. No, that was an amazing, amazing answer. And and yeah, like I exactly like I it's it's comforting to know that like that is like something that, you know, even you know everyone can have to rely, you know, it's not it's not an insulting thing to be like, oh, here, you know, just to help get back into it. Cause that's just you know, cause I, I've seen people do it like how Bryce said with, you know, like a, a line kind of brings you back in, but you know, it's, it's just, it's such an, it's such an interesting thing. Like, you know, and for me, you know, you've just gotten a taste of it, you know, like I'm super, there is that insecurity of like, oh, you know, yeah, like, is it going to sound the same or is it going to sound completely different? And people are going to be upset about that, you know? And I think I, I got I hung up on that. That prevents, you, that prevents <laughs> you from entering the secondary reality of our world. Exactly. Because you're stuck in a Vivian thought as opposed yeah. to being stuck in a, in a you know, uh, which whatever character you're, a, a, a Keeney thought, you know, or, or, a, or, a, or a Stolas thought. Or, you know, it, it's like, that is like a who cares. You don't have the voice. Okay, play it for me. Yeah, that's, exactly. <laughs> that's all I do. Okay. Happens to me all the time. I, I, I forget the voices that we do. Yeah, I, I I was about to say like I um I've taken I've taken class from from Richard um another class that I took that I really enjoyed was a uh, Crispin Freeman when I first started uh oh, I doing voiceover and he oh ha huh, there you go <laughs> um <clears throat> but uh he he always said it's about what psychologies do you understand the voice is so secondary like it's all about the psychology of the character can you nail that like. For me, at least when it comes to, you know, auditioning or whatever, like obviously, you know, when you, when you voiced a character over years, yes, of course you need a reference, but it's okay. How do you, how does this character think? Okay. What sound comes out? Great. That's what they sound like. Perfect. Like I never approach any role like, okay, what is it? What are they going to sound like? It's like, no, how do they think? What, how do they move through the world? Like, you know, hey, thank you, Alexa. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah, that sounds like good. Mm -hmm. Voice does the work of the spirit. You're, you're going to do a voice when you're playing on the playground. You know, if you're playing like Star Wars, you don't go, Luke, I am your father. And then I don't say to my friends, you know, hey, did you believe me when I said, Luke, I am your father? Or should I have done it like, Luke, I am your father? Yeah. You, know, you know, we did voices all the time. That was the true art of playing pretend. Yeah. Just that we got older and we were very consciously aware of being seen and judged. Oh, yeah. And that's then what we learned to do is to um, is to uh, self-deprecate ourselves before anyone else can call us on it. Meaning, yeah, you know, I know that was bad. I know that was bad. I'll get it. I, you know, that's what we do. And, but when we were kids, we didn't do that. You know, you didn't, you know, I may not be right for Superman. I will not book the role of Superman in this universe. Maybe in like an evil parallel Muppet Baby universe, I might be Superman. But when I was a kid going, shh, Dun, da, 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 freeze Lex Luthor, I'm Superman. I didn't worry what I sound like or what I look like. And that's what we lose. And I'll show you what we lose. I've done this before and I know this, I'm taking time, but I just want to really, I really, really want to nail this point for everyone that's listening. If you told a kid that this rock was a birthday cake, a kid would say, can it be my birthday? How many candles is it? What flavor is it? Everyone's saying happy birthday. Can we sing happy birthday? That's what a kid would do. 
we lose that as we get older and we put our livelihood on what we do as we get older and we, and the kid and an adult goes, okay, that rock is, uh, is a cake. Let me see if I can use sense memory to believe it's a cake. <laughs> no, we're pretending it's a cake. We're just playing pretend people. <laughs> Here ends my sermon. <laughs> uh, amazing, Richard. I, I have to say to you as a mother, it's really the best analogy because my daughter plays doctor with um, Play-Doh. Mm -hmm. So I ordered her a doctor's kit. Oh, that's cool. And then my daughter was pretending that she was cooking with saran wrap. And then I ordered her um, a, a kitchen. But it's so true. It's, it's the imagination. They it's, don't care. They, they don't, don't care. And don't spend money as a parent. They like empty boxes yes. and bottles with rocks in them. And that's exactly what acting is. It's finding that. It's yeah. finding that and it's wonderful. Yeah, and, and that's and that's what we, we I, I try not to lose all the time because adult world, because you grow up in this world where, where you say, well, like, if, people ask me, what's my job all the time? I say, oh, I play pretend and play pretend fully. That's a total definition of my job. I play pretend and play pretend fully. What, so you just screw around all day? You call it screwing around, I, I call it just playing. Because in this world, you're taught, no, you have to work hard, you have to work nine hours a day, you have to make this much money, you gotta support that. It's like, we feel guilty that we just get to do what we get to do, but th that's okay. There's a place in this world for playing pretend, and that's what I teach, and that's what I live by. That is like, anybody who knows me knows that my whole life is about, yeah, it's okay to be silly and to play. And that's how we do. That's, that's my thing. I have to go. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm shy. <laughs> no, that was amazing. No, I, 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 I hate most grown-ups. <laughs> I do. Um, when I see, when, yeah, because you're, you're, yeah, people are afraid to pretend. It's, you're right. It's like, the, the, it took me a long time to get over the guilt of like, I can say I could I could I could act for a living and, and not have to work at a law firm and, and be in a cubicle to feel like I've justified the acting part of it. Um, but if you you know, but obviously like it's hard it's hard to make both work. But if you can't make a full time doing what you love, the last thing you need once you've made it to that point is to feel bad about it. You know. Um, so I don't know, I'm very, I, I, yeah. But anytime I fill up my, the, my car, you know, like at the gas pump, I'm like, silliness to put this in here. Like, you know, it's, like, it's, it's such a fun thing to like realize, oh, I get to just play around. When I was a kid, I grew up next to a playground and that was a submarine and I was a captain and all the other kids in the neighborhood were my crew. And every night we just got it, we, we believed it so much that I started actually, you know, talking to them, you know, abusively because I was just the, our dynamic, you know, I was the captain. I see you at the supermarket. Fuck your mom. I, you're, I'm in charge. So I love a job where I can just perpetuate believing that <laughs> I'm whoever I want to be. Yes. And it's okay. Not only is it okay, it's healthy. It's yeah. healthy. Yeah. And, you know, when you ask what the advice you would give Moxie or your character. My 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 main advice is not only to keep singing, um, but to keep laughing. <laughs> because mm -hmm. any of us that you know have been in relationships, the strongest thing, and you know, I've done a ton of toasts at people's weddings, my niece's weddings. And I said the most important thing that my wife Kristen and I have going for us is that we laugh. We laugh. Even through hard times, we laugh, we laugh, we laugh. And she still laughs at me as much as she did the day we met. And I laugh at her and we, you know, that's hard to sustain. But if you can remember that, it's okay to just play. Mm -hmm. It's it's okay. So I feel very animated. Absolutely. <laughs> um, that, that's an amazing like question to land on. Just just to, to cap it off, like Bryce, uh, is there anything? Because I, I know you also um, have done so much like theater, which is like the live embodiment embodying of characters and stuff and then like is it all all kind of fits in with with that or is it is there like a different approach or is it yeah it's the I, same yeah I, I was taught it's called a play for a reason <laughs> you know it's not called a serious <laughs> you know <laughs> so um yeah 
and I think the, that hearing that from the, the voice acting world, it, it's, it's really comforting because we, in the theater world, we're thought, yes, dude, it's the sandbox, and we're all headed back to the sandbox, and as long as we agree on the rules of the sandbox, then we can just play. And, and nobody uh, poop in the sandbox. That is bad. Because we're <laughs> not cats, people. We are not cats. Yeah, we're not that's cats. Right. And Unless that's not Al Monroka. That's not Al Monroka candy. I'm just telling all. <laughs> amazing. Oh well, that uh, that was an amazing like final kind of discussion and everything. <laughs> I got a little carried away there, but it's like birth from birth from you know just like just I mean like I said this is this is a world that like I've been lucky enough to to witness you guys who are masters at, at this at this playing pretend and 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 for me. And I know Richard knows this, but I'm, I'm getting over stage fright. You know, I, I have some stage fright issues because I've taken your class and I've now I've voice acted. And, and it's it's very comforting though, that like, you know, as, especially with you as, as a director, like right. incredibly supportive of like mistakes. And like, even if it's like, there's been times, I know this happened in the class, but it also happened in, um, in the voice. Is that like, you know, for me, since I'm not very like, I'm not very in tune with like accents or, or specific different things. It's like, you'd give a note of like, try it like this. And I would do it, but I would do like a completely different accent. You're like, all right, you're, you're this instead now. All right, go with that. <laughs> Very yeah, encouraging. That's right. Embrace that allows you to play. I might hear Stolas, you know, in a higher thing because that's how I hear it in my head. But when Stolas comes out, you know, Bryce could say to me, and you can always say this, you know, I, I can't hit that that pitch or I, I feel more comfortable here. I'd be great. As long as the story is served, that is all that I care about. There's nothing more important to me than story. And the last bit of advice I'll tell everyone that I also say to you over and over again, other people's opinions of me are none of my business. They're just, they're not any of my business. Other people's opinions of me are none of my business. Mm. And, you know, the internet can be dangerous and all those places and all those things. But I, I, you know, I don't live to impress. I live to express. That's what I do. And you can be either an impressor or an express, expressor. Neither's right, neither's wrong. You just have to know which one you are. I started out as an impressor and shifted my focus to being I, an I'm reading a book right now called um, Ego is the Enemy, and there's a quote in it, uh, you can you can be somebody or you can do something. And I love that because I'm like, I want to do something. Like, I don't just want to be somebody. I want to I want to like do something. But like, you are doing something because you are bringing millions of people your expressiveness that makes them laugh in times of depression, makes them feel safe when they feel alone. So we have a tendency to forget that because we're, we're so cloistered in a booth all the time. But those of us that go to conventions know that we've had people that have come up to us and say, you know, I was in the hospital and your show made me laugh so hard. Um, soldiers who have come up to, to me at, at conventions. So you are doing something. You are doing something. You all are doing something. You're expressing yourselves and giving yourselves to people that you have no idea who you're reaching. A no lot idea. of people come up. We're to not you. meant to comprehend it. As yeah, human beings, yeah. We cannot comprehend. I agree. It. You know what? I, 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 what I, growing up, I was a big nerd. I still am. I ate and devoured lore, movies, TV shows. You know, I was our audience growing up, and it. A lot of shows saved me when certain times of just wanting to be happy or wanting to understand, to relate to something in a small town that I lived in. I didn't relate to a lot there. And so that was, you know, I very much understand the power of escapism. And so it's such a cool honor to be on the other side of that for other people, you know, mm -hmm. and I think there's, you know, all of us have been a fan of something at some point that changed and influenced us pivotally. And, um, I don't know. I, I, I try and keep it that, keep that in mind, like this show. And it, it, honestly, I'm a fan of this show too. I mean, I, it, I look forward to the next episode coming out just as much as any other fan does. And so it's, yeah. Anyway, I don't know. I don't know where I was going with this, but uh, <laughs> I just love jerking our own. Uh, <laughs> all, all this yeah, it's about hyping up the show. It's just so fun it, but it's a pretty good one. What's it's that? so fun. I, I'm just like, it's just so fun to work out. Like my perspective is just working with, with you guys and working with the artists and the animators. Like it's just a blast every day. And it's, it's just fun to see unravel. And the treat is getting to share it with everyone yeah. and, and everything. Yeah. Oh my God. I look, I look just like Brendan. I look forward to that 
release as much as everybody else. Like once it coming out, I can't wait and see what you what you've been up to. What yeah. you've been up to when I haven't talked to you in, in a in a month. <laughs> what have you been up to? <laughs> and that's a that's a good thing to to leave off. I, or I'm, I'm gonna start wrapping things up. But the, the one thing I will say on that note is that we are incredibly hard at work on the newest episode. It's definitely the biggest undertaking of season one. Um, and, you know, it's it's coming along. Uh, we I know it's been a while since we put one out, um, but this one is is hefty. That's why. And, and, and but we're getting close. Like, I, I know I haven't given a date yet and I, and I can't yet because I don't want to uh, those those who, who don't already know, I think I say it a lot, but I don't like to promise a date until I know we can hit it. So um, so you know we we haven't yet, but we are we are getting like it is in the final kind of the final stretch. You know we we we're, we're getting closer than we than we the, certainly than we have been you know yeah. recently. So we're we're very close. So I'm excited to get that new episode out for for everyone and and yeah this this has been amazing as always. So. Uh, also for everyone watching this, um, everyone here is going to be doing uh, their own signing um, and uh, we can real fast go through the, the times for that. You guys can, can plug when you're, um, when you're doing your signings. And then tomorrow also um, will be another live stream on the Streamly channel and um, we'll all be there. And there might be some other cast members joining for that one, some, some special guests. And Richard, you're hosting that one, which I'm very I'm excited for. I was like, uh, nobody's we'll, a better host. <laughs> we'll see. I have to see what questions have not been asked yet. I'm making notes as we're going along. <laughs> yes. Yeah, if there's any, because I, I was taking from Twitter, but I'm sure you- Oh, gonna... I've got some questions already. Oh, I'm going to take all of you on. Uh -huh. Nice. All right. <laughs> but, um, but thank you. Thank you guys for, for this has been amazing as always and real fast uh, to go back through so you can, can uh, plug your signings. So let's start with uh, Brandon. When, uh, when is your sign? Uh, I'm actually, I'm going to do mine tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow. This is the, it's the same time um, as it was today, the, the, the panel or the, the, the zoom. And so that's 10 o'clock. So probably whenever after that's done, I'll just do it here while I'm at the office. Look at this. I'm at, I chose this room because it looks like IMP. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, that's that's nice. so cute. oh, that's awesome. But uh, yeah, I'm going to do my, uh, after tomorrow. So whenever that ends, I'm just going to, to hop, hop on, on and IG. Are you doing it on IG? Instagram? Or I think so. Is that, that seems that's to... what I do it on. Yeah. Instagram live. That's... That seems to be all the rage, these IG lives. So give them your IG live uh, address. Give them your IG. Oh, yes. Brandon, uh, Brandon uh, Board. I had to think about my name for a second. <laughs> no, Ari. Uh, Brandon Board. I don't know. Whenever, whenever tomorrow's uh, ends, just, just find me on there and I'll be, I'll be um, pumping through uh, Blitz signature autographs. Mm -hmm. and uh, writing whatever your dirty little requests are. And I've seen some <laughs> holy shit in my experience with these before. <laughs> and um, I, I believe also um, the link to the shop for, ever, for all the prints is going to be in the, in the description of this video. Um, but you can also uh, find it on the Streamly page. There's a hell of a boss um, shop. And also, yeah, everyone's going to have their individual shops, I believe, as well. So, so yeah, very, very... Very um, easy to find, but I'm, I'm sure it'll be in the, the link to this video. Um, uh, Richard, when's, uh, when are yours? So um, I want to first of all say thank you already to the, the generosity of this fan, this this hell of a boss fan base. It's amazing. Um, you you've you've bought a lot of prints, and we're very grateful. So thank you. Um, to that end, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do four o'clock today. I'm going to do a signing. But here's the deal: as all of us that do this, there we got we have a lot of signatures. So if we did each signature individually, <laughs> we wouldn't get through everyone. So what I want everyone to know is that I'm more or less going to um, not, I won't be signing necessarily as I'm doing it. I'm just going to, I'm going to call each one of you out, say your name, you know, respond to what you wrote to me on your order so that you, and you can, and I'll save that. So you can always record it. So you'll have it. Cause I know that a lot of you want to hear the shout out and I'm going to do that for everyone. I'm going to call, I'm going to talk to everyone. I'm going to say your name and I may not be signing it as I do it. Cause that, as, as we've all learned, that can take a long time. Cause then all you're seeing is me doing this. 
Yeah. Yeah. That's actually a good idea, Richard. I think yeah. I might do that too. So what I'm going to do, so everyone knows, I'm going to do start at four o'clock today. I'll be probably going from four to six and I'll get through as many as I can. I will ca- try to call out everybody's name on the order list and try to um, uh, acknowledge what you've written or asked about. And then uh, after our sign, after our live stream tomorrow, I also will be uh, continuing on with this. So whenever that one ends tomorrow, I'll also be doing the, I'll be continuing the shout outs. So that's my plan. Four o'clock today, four to six. Wonderful, wonderful. Uh, Erica, where, where are you? Uh, I think I'm signing uh, n- n- this upcoming Wednesday and Thursday at like 6.30 PST. Uh, hopefully if that works out. So yeah. Awesome, very, very nice. And uh, Vivian, when are, when are you doing uh, here? Thank you guys. Um, I'm gonna be signing today after I have some lunch and get my, my caffeine shakes out. <laughs> so that's gonna be probably in about an hour and then I'm gonna do the same thing tomorrow after Richard's panel. And if you don't know, I'm at Vivi, V-I-V-I-E, Nixie, N-I-X-I-E on IG. I get the two of you mixed up on Insta because your names look so similar at a first glance, the two Vivians. And I'm just like, and you both, yeah, I'm, I've never known one Vivian in my life and now I know two. It's, well, if you, if you kindly click, one's black and the other's not. One is like, <laughs> look, I think Are I we know talking souls? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Yes. Um, I forgot to say, I'm also going to be on Instagram live and mine is Richard Horvitz VO. Oh, I'm a, uh, I'm, I'm the outlier. I'm on Twitch. It's just Erica Lindbeck. That's because you're hip. She's so cool. She's yeah. so cool. <laughs> you're hip. I know. <laughs> um, I'll be on uh, Instagram live tomorrow. I'm at the Bryce Capades and uh, I think I've signed up for 5 PM PST um tomorrow so as long as my kids are asleep by then i'll be signing and i'm probably gonna do the same as richard just do some shout outs this time and um uh i want to make sure everybody gets a gets a chance so we'll see how much we can get through tomorrow and um i'll put out another thing if i'm gonna do do more after then but yeah let, let me echo what everyone said to to the fans you, you guys have given us such a incredible support and and we love working on the show for you, knowing knowing how much you love it and appreciate it, and and we're very grateful that you um, mm-hmm. you know, purchased these prints. And Vivian, you're also signing, correct? Uh, me? Yes. Yeah. I I um, well, no, no, no I said yeah. Okay, <laughs> I no. said yeah because I agreed to sign at some point. At some point, but just, not um, not this time. No, yeah. I, I uh, unfortunately I just don't have the time. I also wasn't. I don't. I don't know what I'm gonna sign when I do sign. I think maybe I'll try to get um, some prints made for the show or, or something. Big uh, and, your face. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> <It's gonna laughs> <wild. laughs> but I, I kind of want to do. Yeah, I, I might try to do like a joint of. I, I voiced both Deary and. Um, Keeney, so maybe something like that. I'm super oh, new to that. Give us, like, give us a little, yeah, no, yeah, yeah, no, yeah, no. a little, no. yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, no. Yeah, I would yeah, just no. do that around the state. Like I'd be in studio calls with the, the crew, and I was, I would do that a lot. I'd go, yeah, no, no, <laughs> no. Uh, and then right to tie into the show. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, yeah, no. <laughs> but um. But no, yes, thank, thank you guys so much for being here. Thank you so much for your questions. Um, I definitely go go get prints from the, you, it's absolutely worth it. And it's been amazing to have you guys here. And I wish you luck with your signings and everything. Um, and just, yeah, like thank, thank you guys so much for, for all the support you've uh, done for the show. Like, you know, we, we literally could not be making it without the, the support of, of all of this and I'm it's 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 for you guys like it's so it's so for you guys the new episode is coming as soon as we can get and it will be soon at this point like it will definitely be soon I'm so excited for everyone to see this one like I'm really excited for you guys as the cast to see this one and just the world to see this one the the artists behind this episode went all out and it's it's going to be incredible and I'm so proud of the team so very excited for that. Can't hype it up enough. I hope it 
for hosting <laughs> us. I feel good about yeah, thank you. hyping it on this one. Thank you for hosting us, Vivian. Yeah, of thank course. you. This is clapping in Zoom land, right? Or is it just jazz hands? Jazz hands. Jazz hands. Yeah. Yes, thank you guys so much for being here. It's always, awesome. always a pleasure. Thank you guys. Thank, thank you. you.